verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, just ask you, sir, as only you're able to do, God, to have your way, Father, whatever time, God, we have left, Lord. And Heavenly Father, God, help us keep our eyes and mind, Lord God, focused on you and you alone, Father. God, hide me behind your cross, God, as only you're able to do. God, speak, Father, Lord. God, forgive me, Lord, why I let you down, Lord God, why I failed you, Father. And God, if any moment's lost and undone, Father, I pray you're saved, Lord God, as only you're able to do, God, for the last too late, Father. And God, as only you're able to do as well, Lord God. I pray, Father, that God, we just love you more and more, Father. We might love each other, Lord God, and be the, the, the one whole body, Father, that you long for us to be. Lord, I love you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn around, shake two people's hands, say, good to see you. What's up? Hey, what's up? Glad you come in. Good to see you. That's Here is 2 Timothy chapter 2 for Cam for. You must also know this is Paul, his letter to Timothy. And uh, he's addressing a bunch of things going on about how to keep the church in order and what's going to happen after he leaves. And anyway, telling him different things about the different gifts, about being strong in the Lord. And goes through and before he dies, no let's talk to him. But this is an interesting passage right here because as he's talking to him, you got to understand how much older Paul was than Timothy. Timothy was, was a young man. Past probably in his teen years, and he was getting a lot of stuff from Paul that, that perhaps the teenager today wouldn't be able to handle. And uh, just goes to show, I still think that an 11, 12 year old man from 1800s would whoop a grown man from today. Yeah. Just because, simple fact, of everybody today is a bunch of sissies. Right. And uh, just look around how things, you know, have, everybody says progress, but I don't think it progressed, I think it would digress. But anyway, he's leaving them in charge because back in, 12 year old was a grown man, had full responsibilities, know how to do right. stuff. Now you got a 30 year old, can't pay child support, right. can't keep a lights on, right. don't know how to put food in the cabinet, don't even want to do a, a blessed thing uh, to help out anymore. Well, I want to tell you, we're in a mess nowadays, guys. Uh, but he's talking to him, he said, You know, said, uh, the, he starts out with verse 19, he said, But nevertheless, because all the way up to this time, they were talking about errors going on, they were talking about how those didn't believe, he was talking about how those had led others astray. Matter of fact, there was some that even said that the resurrection wasn't going to take place, the resurrection already took place, talking about Jesus already come, or he had to come, he had all this woman, all this stuff, and the Bible said what it did was it started confusing other people. And see, that is what religion without Jesus does. Religion without Jesus will start to confuse everybody. I think it'll mess you up. So that's why the Bible says you got to understand the thing about the Lord. But I see this right here when he says, nevertheless, what he said, slave or what about that, it don't make no difference, guys. Uh, matter of fact, I looked at the first thing I thought about when God said, Paul said, nevertheless, here, I thought about how, you know, we talked about the first time everybody got to go up because nobody says Christmas, everybody says holiday or this or that or, or whatever. It ain't easy to know about butter, all the stuff like that. And everybody gets all tore up, everybody gets all down, everybody thinks that God ain't God no more if you don't say Christmas, if you don't say Easter, if you don't say this, if you don't say that. You got to understand, nevertheless, he's still God. Right. Nevertheless, I find he's right. still able to save. Nevertheless, he's still able to heal. Nevertheless, he's still able to bless God to do whatever he sees fit to do. As a matter of fact, there's never been a moment of God's life that he ain't been everything he could be and more. Matter of fact, God, when it comes to God, God will never have to live up to his potential because right. he's God. Matter right. of fact, he's like, boy, when it comes to God, you, you, you have to understand something. That God is not limited uh, by brothers and sisters, uh, by our resources and what we call him, what we say he is, what we say he ain't, what we say he could be, what we say he's not. He's God all by himself. Uh, so in spite of everything going on, uh, nevertheless, uh, he's still God. Nevertheless,
place. You've got to understand that the God we serve ain't up in heaven chewing his fingernails down to the bone going, what am I going to do? No, I believe it, boy. He's not up in heaven about to fall off the throne, drop there to heart attack because it seems like everybody's turned their backs on the Lord and walked away embracing every religion, embracing every denomination, embracing every way but the way of the cross. Nevertheless, you've got to understand that heaven's doing just fine. You've got to understand, nevertheless, that God, bless God, just as much God now as He was when He formed the world. That's why He's still God. These things do not affect God like they affect the human beings. Matter of fact, you've got to understand that God, when it comes, when it comes to God, He was God before we was. He'll be God when we ain't. He'll be God forever. Matter of fact, I kind of like where it says, well, you know, what do your sins mean? And the Bible said, you know, the east is to the west where God puts them. You know how big God is? He's big enough to stretch from the east all the way to the west. How long will he last? He'll last from the beginning all the way to the end because he's God. But it said here, he said, I don't want you to worry. I don't want you to get tore up. He said, because nevertheless, no matter what's going on, no matter what they're telling you at school, no matter what they're telling you at work, no matter what's going on in the courthouse, no matter what's going on in the news, what's going on on TV, what's going on in the White House, what's going on in the government, what's going on in the military. He said, nevertheless, this is the only thing my brother said that we can have confidence in. The foundation of God stands sure. No wonder the songwriter said, all other ground is sinking sand. That's right, you got to stand, my brothers and sisters, upon the rock of ages. you got to know when you stand on the solid rock, my brothers and sisters, you cannot fail. I told you one, failure is not in God's vocabulary. That's right, he said, you must understand that God, I'm talking about Jehovah God, not a little God, not a wooden God, not a statue God. I'm talking about Elohim. I'm talking about Jehovah Nisi. I'm talking about I'm talking about Jehovah Jireh. I'm talking about, bless God, Jehovah Salome. I'm talking about the God that everybody, when they heard him speak, they used to shake, used to tremble in fear. That's the God I'm talking about. I ain't even talking about some God that you can boss around and a God that you can order. I'm talking about a God. The God I serve ain't taking orders. He's the giving orders. And the Bible says you've got to understand that if you on board this old ship of Zion, you ain't got a word that when the storm comes, when the rain falls, he's still going to be standing. Yeah. That's why heaven's still going to be heaven. Jesus still going to be Lord. God's still going to be on his throne. And ain't nobody like Jesus, no matter what anybody says. But the Bible says, nevertheless, you got to know that one thing you can count on is that, bless God, have, having this seal. Right. Having the seal. The Lord knows them that are His. And when I see that, it lets me know that the Lord also knows them that are not His. Yeah, that's right. It takes me to death to know that when God hell proof me by placing His Son in my heart, that He put a seal on me. A seal of protection on me. A seal that as He sits in the lower world, He looks down and those that are born again have a seal on them. That's right. God has never been fooled or deceived in the calling you a child of God when you're really a child of the devil. Right. Amen. God would never call a lost man saved or a saved man lost. That's right. Looks right through all that. Yes, he does. You say, what's the seal look like? I don't know, but I can't. I kind of think that the Savior does like you the second I got in. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Put that seal all over. I'm going to tell you, I ain't got past that point yet, my brothers and sisters. That's fine. Uh, matter of fact, we know that the blood is what it takes. The blood's what it's going to take. And matter of fact, from Genesis to Revelation, it's always been about blood. Yeah. Always been about blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There's no forgiveness of sin. Uh, but the Bible said they have a seal. God knows them are his. And let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Yeah. Amen. 
He said, you say you're a child of God, then stay out of sin. Amen. Amen. You say you're a child of God, I don't like this. I, I don't like when you hear somebody say, if you're a child of God, I've said before. If you're a child of God, act like one. Right. Don't act like one, be one. Amen. Amen. That's what's wrong now. Got too many actors. Yeah. Hollywood's full of actors. Yep. That's right. Bad thing is, church full of actors too. That's right. Yeah. Matter of fact, I dare say there's some people in the house of God that when Jesus comes back, they could win an Academy Award for the holiness they put on and they'll still be in the house of God when Jesus has packed us up and took us to the house. Yeah. Because God ain't looking for act. He's looking for the real deal. Bible said verse 20, but in a great house. In a great house. My eyes are relatively small. I don't consider it a great house. But I consider it a gift that God has given me. Uh, uh. But when I see this right here, got to understand it in a great house. God had prepared for those who love Him a great house. Right. Uh. Matter of fact, we know John 14 said, and my father's house will bring mansions. Right. Now, how big is God's house that in His house He's got mansions? Yeah. Now, in my house I got rooms. That's right. In my house I got three rooms and two bathrooms, and that's all she wrote. But in God's house, He said I got mansions. How big a house is Daddy God got, my brother and sister? Oh. If this house, His rooms are considered mansions. If I was in a big house, you got. The scripture says, goes into two different things here. First, you have a vessel that's of gold and of silver, wood and earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. Look around, church. Yeah. I can look in the mirror. Can't speak to nobody else. Sometimes I see a vessel of honor. One day I'll see a mess of this on. But nevertheless, the foundation of God still stands sure. God's faithfulness ain't based on mine. That's right. When I let him die. He's still God. Amen. Yeah. When I ask for forgiveness, He's God enough to forgive me. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I know that every time He will let God down. He let them reap what they sowed and then turn right back around. And as soon as they got back right with Him, He blessed them again. Right. Because we serve God, my brothers and sisters. Well, that's why I call salvation is unmerited faith. Yeah. We don't deserve it because it's like this. When you get born again, it's God's obligation to take care of you to the day we're with you because we become one of His. That's what salvation is. Salvation is straight up adoption papers into the family of God. That's why He got to take care of us, my brother. But you can't take that for granted. That's right. That's right. Bob said, some of them are honor, some dishonor. If a man purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of unto honor. Now when a man or woman purges themselves, what you do is you're trying to empty what's on the inside. It's a poor example, but I think of an enemy as the best example of emptying oneself. <laughs> if you've never had one, don't worry, one day it'll happen. <laughs> Just don't go too far from home. But if God is ever going to fill you with Him, He first has to empty you of self. <coughs> so the Bible says to purge. 
And when you purge, you go through and everything that's in you that ain't good, you try to get rid of. Anything that you're doing that ain't healthy, you try to change. When you purge, you can look, take a sample of your blood pressure. If your blood pressure is 160 over 100, you know, don't go home and eat a bag of lace chips and a pound of bacon. You've got to make some changes. Uh, if you're going to walk close to God, my brothers and sisters, uh, you've got to understand that we got to make some changes. Amen. And if we're going to stay close to God, we must make changes. Uh, but it said this. He said also, if he purge himself, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified. I don't know about nobody else, but what I want God to look at me and see is a vessel of honor. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I don't want God to be ashamed of me as I'm ashamed of me. He said, but if you purge yourself and you get rid of these things, he said, you become something that I can use. I thought the note was in Job chapter 40 and 41. I use it for one of my favorite examples. That Job, when Job told God, I'm vile, I'm wicked, and I'm filthy, I ain't worth nothing. And God said, now I can use you because you realize who you are. Amen. Me. You're nothing. That's right. And when you... You got all that stuff and you got all that mess. God said, now I can use you. That's right. Now I can use you. He said, when you puke up self, when you puke up righteousness, when you puke up all that, excuse me, sanctimonious and pious and arrogance, and when you think you're better, somebody, when you puke all that stuff up, God can use you. But not until you get rid of all that stuff. But the Bible said this. He said, not only will you be a vessel and honor sanctified, he said, you will be meet or worthy for the master's use. I don't know about nobody. That's what I want. I want to be where God wants me to be, where God can use me for his glory and use me for his honor. Use me, my brother and sister, the way I can lift up the name of Jesus. I ain't got to be ashamed of what I've done that week or, or what I said or, or where I've been. I want to be where I, God wants me to be, the word God. That's why I will be who God wants me to be. But the thing about it is, guys, we got to realize that long as it's about self, it'll never be about God. Right. Never be about God. See, tell them this. He said, So not only, he said, Well, I use you. That's what he said. Prepare. Prepare unto every good work. That means when you puke all that stuff up, God is preparing you to use you. Wow. Yeah. That means God is the one getting you ready. Yeah. God is the one about to use you. That's what I want. I want to be where God can use me. Yeah. And I hope pray, children of God, we ought to all want to be where God can use us. Right. It'll be our prayer, our heart's desire. Yeah. God, use me. Right. Use me. Let somebody see me and think about you. Let somebody see me and know there's a God. Let somebody hear my story and know if you've done that for them, you can do the same thing for me. He goes on to say this as well. He said, prepare, verse 22, he said, flee, flee, youthful lust. <clears throat> when I see youthful lust, I always think about how kids so cruel, you know, I think about how I was in school and everybody running their mouth and the other all this wants to start running with them, blah, 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 stuff like that. It's funny because I thought in church one time, in uh, Alexander, the very front of church, the preacher come over and he told a little girl, spoke in her Peter sent and said, I don't you repeat it. And I don't remember what it was. When it got to the end, when out of two or some people got done with it, it was a mess. Because nobody knew what they was being said before they started making up stuff. And when it got to the end, it was something else. He's saying, hey, look, it's 2016. I'm about to come back. You ain't got time to jump. That's right. You ain't got time to do little old stupid games and get caught up about he said, she said stuff. I thought about that. I said, just be glad that he's saying or she's still saying something about you. Because if he's still talking about you, she's still talking about you. You must be doing something right for the kingdom of God. Get word when people ain't running you down. Get word when people ain't talking junk about you. Get word when people ain't lying on you. When people ain't gossiping on you. When people ain't bringing you down. Because when everything everybody's saying about you is good, God ain't in it no more. 
He said to flee from that mess. He said to follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Because if you got those, you got a pure heart. Right. When you empty one of all that mess, then you can have that. And that's what it takes. To reach heaven. I thought about the little children. And how. Jesus always said. Suffer not the little children. He said let them come to me. Right. He called himself a call for such. It's the kingdom of God. Right. But I almost said let you humble yourself as a child. He said you shall no way enter in. This is what I say in the We said, flee from you for lust. I think about this. Scripture also said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. Right. But when I became a man, yeah. I put away all that stupid bunch of mess, yeah. all that bunch of garbage, all that fear. And now I'm talking like a man. And the same thing, woman, don't want me to put away all this stuff, become a woman. They come upon your life, love. Bless God, you need to grow up. That's <laughs> how and let some of that stuff go. Uh, just grow up. Uh, bless God, I learned. Uh, hey, it kills me because I want everybody to love me, but guess what? Everybody don't. Right. Right. And I'm okay with that. Because last time I checked, Jesus said, ain't you to hate anyway, it's me. It ain't you, Ray, rejecting. It's me. That's right. Matter of fact, he said, blessed are those who are hated for my name's sake. That's right. Bless God, they shall see. Boy, I want to tell you, there's something to be said, my brother, since we're being persecuted and run down for the cause of Christ. We got to know that a minute, young lady back here was talking this, this morning. She said, you know, she said, all this stuff been happening in my life. All this stuff's going wrong. I said, but you're saved? She said, yep. I said, then there's a better day coming. I thought there's a better day coming for the people of God. He said, to flee from you for lust. He said, verse 23, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife. Don't do no cow problems. You know, it's a shame that church folks get together and have a discussion and end up in a knockdown drag out. Yeah. Yeah. Over what color the crystal sea is. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> if God says the crystal sea is Duke blue, it's going to be Duke blue. Yeah, that's right. Can I get a witness from the blue devil in the house? Amen. Yes. <laughs> if God, the streets of gold, he tells them to be purple. They're going to be purple streets of gold. Yeah. And it won't matter because it'll be where God's at. And that's all I'm going to do for you. All that other stuff you can have all that stuff. Just give me Jesus. Uh, if you have all that mess, uh, all that other bunch of junk don't make no difference anyway. Uh, I don't care if your place is bigger than mine. I'm going to be there and that's all I'm worried about. Right. So, that's about everything else. So, I'll be hot fudge and a cherry on top of the sun. Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to Michael, I'll leave a cherry out. But anyway, be hot fudge on top of the sun. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I never understood how church folks, Christian folks to come together there for us and do it in front of all folks. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Break down in fuss and fuss. This is the bad thing about the team. It's when safe folks dog down other safe folks and call all folks. Right. And then when they invite all folks to church, and they ain't no way if God's green earth they want to come to church. Right. And they're running down other people supposed to be born again. Right. I'm just gonna tell you, that ain't working down me. Right. I said for I said again, if you hear somebody running down a child of God, and you know what they say is a lie, you are a punk and a sissy if you don't yeah. stand up for them and set them straight. And if you're the one who wants to go along with you, you're a punk in a season too. Yeah. He said, we got to weigh all this child's bunch of mess. Yes. He said, we ain't got time for it. First about what color the carpet is, you got 400 people to die with the hell. Yeah. Right. Come on. Sure. What a shame and disgrace to be, my brother and sister, set before a holy God and him say, see all the people over there? They died and going to hell, and it's your fault. How's my fault, Lord? Well, I was going to have to come by your church. But y'all fussed about the carpet that day. Yeah. 
Y'all just talking about the women, the men blind. Y'all just talking about all that stuff. So I thought it'd be better off just not send them by your way. That way they didn't shame my name. Yeah. Get them staying with children of God, fuss and fight. Right, come on. It shames the Lord. Come on. Oh, yeah. right. The Bible said that two children of God ain't even supposed to get crossed with each other That's when right. it comes to dialect over the Word of God. That's right. Bible goes on to say this. Because what it does, verse 23, it causes strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Yeah. What the saying is, he's saying, if you're going to serve me, he said, then love everybody. Right. If you're going to serve me, he said, love everybody. Right. Those that look different, those that talk different, those that walk different, those that dress different, those that drive a different vehicle you do, those that pull a different team you do, those that go to different denominations you do, go to different church. He said, if you're going to serve me, you got to love everybody. Yeah. You know, Peter said, God, not one time in the scripture ever said we had a like the first person. Right. You will not find in the Bible where God said, like your neighbor as yourself. He said, love. Because when you get love down past, yeah. love is beyond life. Right. And it says this. <laughs> said, stay away from that mess, guys. And it said, love everybody. Verse 25, it said, do it in meekness. Because look at the difference. Everybody that's saved ain't on the same level. You been walking with God, praying in the Holy Ghost 35, 45 years, you ain't gonna be on the same level. Somebody's been saved a week. So don't go to them and run them in the ground, hammer them down for how they ain't got it all together yet. Because if you look in the mirror, you'll find out you ain't got it all together yet either. He said, You got to realize. That we in this time together. And when you correct a brother or sister in Jesus, don't do it like you're some kind of God or some kind of Lord over them. The Bible said do it in me. Yeah. You wouldn't go up to Brother Don in front of the whole church and say, Hey Don, I know what you did the ball the other night cheating on some man. No. Ain't that what happened, is it, Don? No. No. I pull him to the side and say, man, I've got my boy in my And that woman did not look like Samantha. I hope that's your sister. <laughs> that's how you have something in this. Because how many other people are you going to push away when you act like a high end and exercise authority that God did not give you to abuse and use? That's right. That's right. That's right. So he said, we got to do it in love. You got to do it in love. Bible said this well. Meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, peradventure, or perhaps will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. You got to understand at the end of the day, it's God's got to convict me of my sin, not you. Right. That's right. Amen. That's what it comes down to. Y'all come to God and I'll say, you know, I'll think it's right, blah, 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 but until God convicts me of that. Until God breaks my heart of that, right. you can huff and puff and blow the high down and do no good. But there is a way that a man or woman can handle correction. Because one thing I found out in 43 years of life, I do not like being corrected. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> and I ain't by myself. Yeah. Nobody wants to admit that we're wrong. That's right. That's true. But guess what? We are. <laughs> and he said, God, he said, pray God to give him a chance to repent and to acknowledge or recognize the truth. He said, and they, verse 26, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him, by his Weevil. I think it's Sunday school this morning. I ain't even sure now. We was talking, and talking about how that we make Satan's job so easy. Right. Oh yeah. Satan probably got the easiest job in the world. That's 
Because we'll sit back, let him just run wild in our lives, and we give him ammunition the whole time. Yes. 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 We'll give him all kinds of stuff to use against us, all kinds of mess, uh, give him all this stuff to sit back. He might do nothing. Yeah. Matter of fact, most of the churches you see struggling today, they are imploding. Mm -hmm. yeah. It starts on the inside. Satan might do nothing to them, they do it to the seed. That's right. Amen. That's right. And they come upon your prayer life. Well, you got to understand that some things that you pray, you got to pray in the Spirit. Because yeah. everything I'm going through, you don't even know about. Because it ain't none of your business. Yeah. There'll be some stuff, my brother and sister. But I know that confession is good for the soul. I know it is. I know it is. Yep. But there's some things Satan just sits back waiting on you yes. to say. Yeah. Yeah. He can snatch that up yes. and he can grab that and he can yeah. use that up. There's some things you just got to pray in your heart. Yeah. You got to be like him. Yeah. The mouth is open up but ain't never yeah. come out because he's speaking through the heart. Yeah. And when you're speaking and praying through the heart, you know that's God anyway. That's right. yeah. The Bible says this. He said not only pray to God to give them a chance, he said they can recover. See, we think that once Satan got a hold of us, we can't recover. Nah. The Bible said God will give back everything that the locusts had devoured and the cake worms left. He give back all of it back. Yeah. Don't give it all back. Matter of fact, when it comes to Job, he lost everything he had. But Job 42 says, God gave him back and he had more at the end of his life than he had his whole life. You got to understand that we serve a God, my brothers and he ain't going to give you double for your trouble. He's going to give you everything you need and more. Matter of fact, we know he said, try me or test me and see if I will open up the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. Amen. You say, well, God ain't blessing me. You ain't there. Right. He said, well, they can recover. Which means make a full, when somebody recovers, they make a full comeback. And that's what God wants us to do uh, when we get down in sin. Don't stay there. We've got to make a comeback. That's right. Get back up, dust back off, get up back on the horse, and keep on going. Uh, he said this is where they can recover out of the snare or the trap of the devil who will take them out of his will. It is Satan's will to get us with our weaknesses. Yep. And Satan does not know your weaknesses until you tell him to. That's right. That's right. Amen. If we did not speak and act, Satan would never know anything. Amen. But our mouths bring us down all the time. Yeah. No wonder James says that this, the tongue, uh, is set on fire of hell itself. Right. Why? Because a man and woman cannot bridle. That's right. That's right. You put a bit or a bridle in a horse's mouth, he might weigh 2,500 pounds, but however you lead, he's going to follow. He's going to follow. Yeah. That's right. But I guarantee if you put that bit in there and you shut his mouth, he won't take him nowhere. He don't want to go. I'm afraid sometimes God telling us until you shut your mouth, I ain't taking you nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. He said they are taken captive by him at his will. It's Satan's will. It's Satan's will. Satan's will that we fail. Satan's will that we mess up. Satan's will that we struggle. Yeah. But I go back to that first verse where it said, but nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. That's why right. he said, you might be going to fall, but nevertheless. You might be going to fall short, but nevertheless. Might be going to pick a fit, but nevertheless. Might get mad, but nevertheless. We got to stand on the fact that our God is a nevertheless God. And keep trusting and believing in Him. And I'm going to tell you, he brought us too far to turn back now. He brought us too far to hang us out to dry now. You got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that the worst thing to get in the world, the better thing you're going to get from the church. Because nevertheless, nevertheless, the only thing you'll be sure of in your life is God. Right. Let us think.
Heavenly Father, Lord God, bow before you, sir. Just want to thank you. God, thank you, Lord, for each and every body represented here tonight, Lord. God, I pray you bless them, sir. God, the families, Lord, those couldn't be here, Lord, for whatever reason, Father. But God, I pray, Lord God, for those here tonight, Lord God, that may be discouraged, Lord. Let them know, nevertheless, God still loves them. Nevertheless, God still going to use them. And nevertheless, God never going to leave them, Father. And for that, sir, I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And sir, as all you're able to do, God, keep us safe and go our separate ways, Father. God, convict those, Lord God, close to hell, Father, draw us to you, Lord. Save them, God, as only you're able to do, Lord. God, we need the glory and honor and praise for all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.